Some people talk, talk about another arrhythmia called an irregular heartbeat. Uh, this is another condition called atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia in the world. Millions of people have it. About 1 in 50 people uh, in Europe are thought to have it. Um, so the numbers are very large. It usually develops in the 40s and 50s, but it can develop in younger people or in older people. Now, this has been extensively studied, and we now know the causes. Um, in the normal person, the heartbeat comes from the top of the right upper chamber, spreads through the heart, and the heart beats. In these people with atrial fibrillation, the heart pumps blood to the lungs, and it comes back in four veins. So the blood goes from the veins of your neck and your arms and legs into this right upper chamber, into the right lower chamber. It is then pumped through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. It comes back in these four veins into the left upper chamber. Now, in these people who have atrial fibrillation, there is extra electrical tissue in the four veins at the back of the heart. It is something that you're not supposed to have, but a lot of people have it. And what's unusual is some people seem to develop it as they get older. So what happens is uh, these uh, electrical, this elect the electrical tissue in the veins, which is not supposed to be there, can suddenly start firing, and it causes the heart to go out of rhythm. We term these uh, arrhythmias as uh, an initiator and a maintainer. The initiator is the initial spot that fires an impulse to put the heart out of rhythm. The maintainer is often another spot that stays firing to keep the heart out of rhythm until it stops firing. Now this can last for seconds, minutes, hours, or even sometimes days before it stops firing and the heart will go back into rhythm. In some people, when the heart goes out of rhythm in the upper chambers, it is not able to go back into rhythm. And unfortunately, they will need to be put on a blood thinner and left on it for four weeks to prevent any blood clots forming in the heart. And they have an electrical shock called a cardioversion, where we knock you out with anesthetic for four or five minutes and then shock your chest to put your heart back into rhythm. However, in the majority of people, the heart is able to go back into rhythm on its own. If the condition is treated with medicines at this point, it can stop the areas in the veins from firing and putting the heart out of rhythm. However, if it doesn't get treated, what, what, what will happen next is that instead of having an episode maybe once a year, once every six months, it gets more frequent. The episodes occur maybe even monthly, weekly, or even daily. They go from seconds to minutes or even hours in duration. So they get more frequent, they get more prolonged, and if it is still not treated at this point with medicines to get the heart back into rhythm, uh, it becomes permanent or incurable atrial fibrillation. This can take place over a period of months to years. So that it starts off as an intermittent palpitation, but if it's not treated, it becomes persistent and then permanent. Now, this irregular heartbeat is precisely, precisely that. It's irregular. In other words, it doesn't be totally regular like uh, the SVT I mentioned. This goes in little bursts, it stops and starts, but it's fast but irregular. And it feels like the heart is stopping and starting at different speeds, and it's very uncomfortable. The reason people feel tired with it is, as opposed to the other arrhythmias, the two upper chambers are actually beating 400 times a minute. They are completely out of rhythm, so they pump no blood. Now, the two upper chambers in the normal person pump 30% of the heart's output. The two lower chambers pump 70%. So if the heart is out of rhythm, you're down by 30%. So it's like a car firing on three cylinders instead of four. There will be no power in the engine when you try and go up a hill. So people who are in atrial fibrillation, they might be fine when they're sitting around, but if they try and walk up a hill or do any exercise, they get very short of breath very quickly. The majority of people are, are very symptomatic when the heart goes out of rhythm, and they don't like it. So how can you treat it? Um, the first approach is we will put you on a blood thinner, uh, to prevent you forming any blood clots. We then put you on a rhythm pill to stop the area in the veins from firing and to get the heart back into rhythm. The medicine may convert you back just on its own. Otherwise, after four weeks on the blood thinner, we will then bring you into hospital for a day procedure and just shock you, after knocking you out, of course, uh, to put the heart back into rhythm. You need to stay, however, on the rhythm pill to stop the veins from firing. Otherwise, you'll go back out of rhythm again. Now, there is a long-term cure for this procedure, for this condition, if you get it in the early stages. Uh, like the other arrhythmias, we can put catheters into veins in your leg, into your heart, 
and using a cautery tip in the shape of a circle, we can burn the tissue that's inside the vein uh, and around the opening of the vein and prevent the electrical impulse from getting from inside the vein into your heart and putting your heart out of rhythm. If it's done in the early stages, particularly in young people, uh, the condition is completely curable. However, if it, if it progresses and your heart has been out of rhythm for weeks, months, even years, it becomes more and more difficult to get the heart back into rhythm without leaving the person on medicines for the long term. But uh, if it's done uh, in good time, it is possible to take people who've been out of rhythm for years even, to get them back into rhythm, but they would need usually to be on even a low dose of a medicine to keep their heart in rhythm and keep it beating normally. So atrial fibrillation, as I've been talking about, is becoming increasingly common. And there's a lot of uh, theories as to why this is the case. We see it in a small group of young people, often very fit athletes, and we can't really explain why they get it. But the majority of people are overweight, and a lot of them have a type of snoring called sleep apnea, where they snore and they stop breathing. Now, when they stop breathing, their oxygen levels in their blood go very low, so it's as if they're suffocating. And this near suffocation, which goes on all night long if they're snoring, tends to put the heart out of rhythm. Um, so treatment of the condition in those people would involve losing weight. In a recent study, it's been shown if you lose 10% of your weight, uh, this will keep 40% of people in rhythm without using any medicines or any other treatment. And if you have this ablation procedure and you lose the weight, over 90% plus will stay in rhythm. However, if you didn't lose the weight, only about 20% of people will stay in rhythm. So weight loss is a very important part of the treatment in people who are overweight and particularly in the, in the group of people who snore a lot. Um, the other things that can trigger the heart to go out of rhythm is if your thyroid gland suddenly became overactive. That's very uncommon in this day and age. Or if you were drinking a lot, if you went out and started binge drinking, the excess alcohol can irritate the heart muscle and cause the heart to go out of rhythm. Usually, however, it will go back into rhythm a day or two later.